lot of people think that WPF is difficult. My goal is to make it easier. Today we're going to be going over how to make a custom control in WPF that you can reuse as many times as you want. So first thing we want to do is I'm going to show you guys actually what we're trying to make here. So I have it in a little test project and all that we want to make is an analog clock that has an hour hand, a minute hand, and a second hand that moves in real time. And the way that we're actually calling this clock is we're just calling it with a XAML control. So it's just one line and it has all the functionality wrapped up inside of it into a custom control. So that's what we're going to be doing. And let's get right into it. First thing we want to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to call this we'll call it we'll call it custom controls and this is going to have our analog clock in it just give me a regular CS file and we'll make it public and this is going to inherit from control and that's going to allow us to call it in XAML so let's actually go ahead and do that let's go into our main window import that namespace let's call it custom and custom controls and now if I do custom and a colon to get into that namespace we can just plop our analog clock right there and the control is in our window so let's run the application whoops gonna have to switch the startup project go ahead and do that and of course there's really nothing here now let's go into our analog clock and what we actually want to do is we want to define a style for this clock so that it has a look to it and that's going to go into a resource dictionary and we'll call this analog clock style and this is just going to have the default style for the analog clock so we're going to define a style target type is going to be the analog clock which is just the namespace is local since we're in the same namespace and we're going to have a setter for the template and this is what the control is going to look like so let's give it a value and it's going to be a control template the target type is of course the same type that we're styling the analog clock and this is where the style for the clock is going to go the default style the default look so first thing we probably need is a grid and we're going to need some lines because we're going to have an hour hand a minute hand, a second hand and then we're also going to have an ellipse for like the border of the clock so let's give this some properties say the stroke, it'll be black stroke thickness will be about one we'll give it some vertical alignment, horizontal alignment uh, what else do we need? Oh, we need the start point for the line, that'll be zero the end point we'll do say negative 100, that's what I used when testing and that's what worked for me let's just try regular 100 though and then we're going to copy all this to all of our other lines and of course this is going to be the hour hand so we're going to make this shorter and the second hand is going to be red instead of black and let's go into our ellipse this is going to be black as well one stroke thickness we'll give it a width of 210 so I want it to be a little bit longer then if two lines were lined up with each other, it'd be 200 pixels long. So we want this to be a little bit longer so that the lines didn't touch the end. And of course, the same height, so it's a circle. And I think that's actually all we need for the ellipse. Now, another thing that we need to do is we need to give these lines names. Because we're going to need to search for these lines in this class so that we can manipulate them so we're gonna name it part second hand and part is just a naming convention for custom controls you want to name your elements inside the default template with part so that if anyone tries 
to override the default style, they know what kind of names to give the elements. And then we're going to have a part minute hand and an hour hand. Part. Already breaking conventions here. And while we're at it, we'll give the ellipse one too. Part border. Okay, so that should be good for now for the clock. And now, how do we actually give it, give the analog clock the style? Well, we're going to need a static constructor. And this is where we're going to define the style to use. So we're going to say default style key property dot override metadata type of, it's the type of our clock and new framework property metadata metadata gonna have to import that and all this is gonna do is tell the application that calls this constructor hey we need to override the style there's some style out there that needs to be applied to this clock Okay, and how is it going to find that style? Well, if we run the application now, it still can't find it. It doesn't know where to find the style. And for WPF, what you have to do is you have to define a folder called themes. It's very important that it's called themes. And inside, we need a resource dictionary called generic.xaml. And that is where this constructor, this overrun metadata, that's where it's going to find this style. So we need to actually put this res resource dictionary into generic.xaml and we're going to do that just with a merged dictionary. So merged dictionary, the source of it, this is just the path to get to this XAML. So starting from here, it's in custom controls and analog clock style dot xaml so now that we have that we should be able to run this and it should show the clock and there it is and as you can see actually it's it's all like centered and I did find when I was testing if I made these negative that's why I wanted to make them negative because it pushes them pushes them that way. And another thing I want to do is I want to have these at the top actually. So to do that, we're going to have to put a little transform on our grid. Render transform and we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And that should that should fix that so all the lines are pointing to the top. Although it didn't because when we rotate it, say it's say it like rotates it it like rotates it off the screen. We want it to rotate in place and to do that we need to set an origin and we're just going to set it as the center of the control. Center rotates along the center. There we go because otherwise it was rotating along like a point out here and it would just rotate it off the screen. That's not what we want. Okay so we have our style defined. That should be all that we need in here for now. So we can actually close that out. And we have our analog clock being drawn. Now what we actually want to do is we want the clock hands to update in real time. And to do that, we're going to need to override. We're going to have to first off get, I wish I had the, okay, let's open this back up. We're going to actually have to get these lines into our CS file so that we can manipulate them. And to do that, we need to override one apply template. So when the template is applied, that's when we're going to read these values. And to do that, let's actually define some variables up here. Line, got to import line. And this is going to be the hour hand. And then we're going to have a minute hand and a second hand. And we're going to set these after the template is applied. So 
template. That's the template of this controller. We're going to find by name. And we gave these very descriptive names of part our hands. And the templated parent is just this. So let's do that for all of our all of our lines here. Getting an error, I'll fix that in a second. Do minute hand and second hand. The reason that we're getting this error is because we need to actually cast these to lines. Now there's probably safer ways to do this. You might want to like have a little if statement check to make sure it actually is a line before you do this cast or else we get some kind of exception. But just for this tutorial, we know they're lines, so we're just going to leave it how it is. And now that we have that, we're going to have all of these lines in these variables so that we can manipulate them. And what kind of manipulations do we want to do? Well, we want to update the line angles to correspond to the current time. So we're going to make a function for that. Update hand angles. And we're going to take our hour hand and we're going to give it a render transform once again. And it's going to be a rotate. Because we're rotating the hands. Let's import that. And we're going to base this rotate off of the current time. So we're going to say date time dot now dot hours divided by 12.0 because that's how many hours are on an analog clock. And we're making this 0.0 so that it gives us a decimal or a double in return. And we're going to multiply that by 360. So that it will give us the angle out of how many degrees are in a circle. And then we're going to, of course, rotate along the center so that we don't get the same issues that we had before with the grid. And we're going to do this for all of our hands. The minute hand, the second hand. Except this time, it's going to be 60. So there's 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. And now let's just call this function after we have all of our hands in variables that we manipulate. And we're going to update the hand angles. So let's see if our clock actually shows the time, which it should. And it does. I don't actually see... I don't see the minute hand, maybe like the second hand and the minute hand were right over top of each other. No, I don't see them. Oh, okay, I didn't I didn't switch this. So this needs to be minute. This needs to be second. That should be okay. There we go. So the current time is ten twenty one. And this is pointing to about ten twenty one and then I don't know what, what seconds it is. But that's, I guess, like 25 seconds, yeah. I don't know what it is in real time. All right, so then we have that. Now, what I want to do is I want to update these hand angles every single second. So that's acting like a clock. And to do that, we're going to need a dispatcher timer. And why a dispatcher timer and not a regular timer is because we're dealing with UI stuff here. So if you use a regular timer, you're going to get exceptions because you're trying to manipulate UI elements from a different thread. The dispatcher timer is a part of the UI thread, I believe. So we're going to have that timer. And the interval is going to be every second. So that's a time span. One second. Every time it ticks, we're going to give it, we're going to tell it to update the hand, the hand angles. And let's start this timer and all should be good. Except it's not. Why is it not? Uh, I'm an idiot. I said timer.stop, not timer.start. Okay. Now it should work. There we go. Our clock is moving along. And the best part about this 
is since we made it into this wrapped up custom control, we can just define as many clocks as you want. You can just, it's super reusable. Oh, whoops. Let's make this a stack panel so we can see all the clocks. And there we go, we have all these clocks. So that, that pretty much does it. We're going to actually extend on this in future episodes, maybe add some dis dependency properties so you can customize the clock just from inside XAML. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from this. And be sure to leave a like, comment, or subscribe for more. Thank you.